So today we're going to talk about very quickly how we made this shot right here for a uh, developer, real estate developers. Uh, we wanted to kind of give them uh, their users and their potential clients a cool view. It's sort of the way they visualize development planning. And so you can notice a couple things going on here. Uh, we've got kind of this glow coming off it to sort of look, make it look like a hologram. And the transparency is at about 70%, so you can kind of see through it. So it's not just this, um, you know, big blocky looking thing. And then we've got a little animation in there. We've got a car driving, um, appearing to move through the scene down the street. And so, and a couple stoplights popping up and things like that. So it really, you know, has, has a kind of cool effect. So this is the way it's set up. What we had is a low poly car which shows up later in the scene. We had a light, just one standard light with the basic soft shadow map on and gave it a kind of a yellow color. Uh, we've got the um, full scene here. This is sort of the um, everything that's not animated. So we have trees, traffic lights, the house. Um, and this is actually their 3D model that we imported. And then we have the solved camera for uh, what is the background footage which is in a material, simply just brought in that way. So uh, let's kind of do this from scratch. Uh, we'll show you how we do this. So first things first, uh, we're going to create a background. Nothing happens. Okay, that's because we haven't done anything really yet. Let's bring in a piece of footage. So in this case, it's dev plan one. This is just the blank footage. We're going to create a map for it and in it goes doesn't look good why because you need to know what your footage was shot in so make sure you come in and make your render settings the same as the footage and I also know the frame rate's 30 but make sure you know the frame rate the next thing we're gonna do is go to the character and we have oh duh motion tracker okay so in here, we're going to take the footage, that same footage, uh, and it's dev plan one, boom, we got it, all right, we'll resample it a bit, at this point we can just turn this background layer off, it's just helpful to have that in there for some guidance, but now we're working inside the motion tracker, what we're going to do is go into 2D tracking and we're going to just start this and you can see that we're loading down here so we've finished tracking in two dimensions and you'll see all these new points have been made there's not a lot to track but there's a couple options up there with the desk and there's obviously some reflections on the table that'll be coming in handy for this particular video uh, now we're going to go to the reconstruction um, and in this viewport right here. Uh, we're gonna leave everything as is and just go ahead and run the 3D solver. Um, you, you should notice that it kind of goes in chunks, 5% chunks, and it should go pretty fast depending how long the video is. If you see it really getting hung up, uh, you might have done a, not done a very good two-dimensional solve. So we're done here. What you're gonna see now is that we have a camera which has been completely solved in 3D, and we have all of these feature points now and what we're going to want to do is we're going to jump inside that camera and now we are looking at all of our motion track points okay so it tracked pretty nicely um, you know we've got a lot of tracker points on the two gentlemen here in the in the footage some good tracker points there um, and we can probably use the points on the table to stick some stick an object to it what normally you might want to do, and we didn't do in this, is tape an X or something right in the middle here that could be tracked, and as opposed to the photo in the background, which is kind of it's kind of moving around. But um, there are some other tricks here. Uh, so when you're in the motion tracker, there's some tags that you might want to ask uh, add. So one's a constraint for the plane. So now you can basically tell it by dragging this to a couple of key points what you want to constrain to as your plane 
and you'll notice that now we've got a flat plane object in there. You also might want to add in a position constraint. This is basically just a button where, and if you add anything, like if I added a square, it's going to go right where that, right in the center of that position constraint. So that's also a helpful tool. So now I've got my cube in there. Now all I do is I rotate it around to kind of match the plane that I created and it's kind of motion tracked. But what you're gonna to want to do is jump out of your camera. Okay, and what you'll notice is my cube, for one, it's just too big for the scene. But for another, I want it to be sitting sort of on top of some of these green points. So we can kind of jump you can kind of get an idea of what the scene looks like by getting out of it and taking a quick look around. This area over here is one of the guys. The other area to the left is the other character, okay? But then we've got what is probably the desk object here. And so if we kind of jump back in, what we actually see is we didn't get a very good track. So we don't really have a plane in here. What these tracker points treated as this they treated this photo as a flat object in the background much the way they treated it the same up here so they didn't read this table because it is a glass table so that is a problem um, but it's not a huge problem what we just basically have to do is get this cube to line up with some of those points in the background that make up what was that photo and so if I'm back in by doing a little bit of playing around I can get pretty close it's still a little bit too close now I'm starting to track okay now it's starting to look good and I guess maybe I want to bring it forward and now you'll see now he's stuck right on the middle of that table okay so that's looking pretty good so what we'll do now is let's make this cube editable and let's kind of compress it down to make it look like it's a the base of our scene and voila all right and then where is my full my full scene I'm gonna bring it in just to replace actually and here it is Let's just put it back there where that was, the cube was, and now I've got it in my scene. But you'll notice that it's not a perfect track. You can see some movement here. So there, it does require you, again, to maybe jump out of the solved camera and push things back and make sure that they're matching your tracker points as far as the depth goes. Um, and so I think it's actually just too, too far away. Um, there we go. Now it's starting to track. And I'm just looking at the you know these indicators on the edge of the table here to help really identify that. So at this point we can jump back to the original scene, which is right here. And I can show you that. Um, and again back to this back to the top we got this light, which is making nice shadows for me. And the only other thing we have to play with now is the display tag on the two scenes. So I've added a display tag, and you can see that um, I let the car sort of go from zero to zero to one hundred percent opacity as it drives into the scene. And then I have the overall scene set at just a visibility of sixty percent, just kind of giving it a little bit of transparency. So that, like I said, that hologramic effect. Um, and the only other thing I can tell you is these trees uh, I was able to get, um, they come inside Cinema 4D, inside the objects. So if you go to, let's see, outdoor objects, you can find a whole bunch of random things. You can find plants all in the visualize tab. And I just brought in some poplar trees and resized them how I wanted and stuck them in my scene. Um, and I had them basically uh, start with 
a display tag of, of zero to a hundred percent so that as they, when they were below my scene, you couldn't see them. And as they rose up, I changed the opacity so that they would, so I couldn't, so you couldn't see them below this plane here is if that makes sense. Um, and the same thing with the houses, they had a display tag on them so that when they were below the plane, you wouldn't see them popping out below that plane. And then as they rose up, they changed transparency and they stuck there. So it's kind of a cool view of, uh, of a little development planners meeting here. And they were really pleased with it. And it's something that you can think of when you're, when you're shooting footage. Think of ways in which you can shoot it and then track or just... In this case, I could have just probably left the camera right where it is and not even used any motion tracking and just had the scene animate kind of like a uh, game of war or whatever that Arnold Schwarzenegger game is or like a, you know, kind of like a Star Wars R2-D2 effect. Really easy to do and you can just render it out from here. Um, my render settings are, uh, I've just got object glow on. I'm 1920 by 1080 in all frames. And that was basically what I did to get that final product. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment field. Thank you.